Okay, so here's another example with a rational function where we're going to try to get out all the information that we can and see if we can draw a graph. So one of the things we might do before we even try to factor is say, well, When the absolute value of x is really big, this thing is approximately x squared over 2x squared, which is just 1 half, right? So that value there, that 1 half, this is a horizontal asymptote. Okay. So y equals 1 half, that's a horizontal asymptote. For vertical asymptotes, we need to factor. So we say, okay, top is the difference of squares. x minus 1, x plus 1. Bottom, x is a common factor, actually 2x is a common factor. So take out the 2x, we're left with x minus 2. Okay, so right away from here we can see that x cannot equal to 0 and it cannot equal to 2. Um, so that means that uh, x equals 2 and x equals 0, these are vertical asymptotes. Okay, um, right, neither of these zeros in the denominator cancels with something in the numerator. Okay, so we know that those have to be vertical asymptotes. Uh, we also know that uh, that 1, 0 and minus 1, 0, these are x-intercepts, right? Those are places where the graph is going to cross the x-axis because if x is plus or minus 1, y is going to be 0. Uh, there is no y-intercept because we can't put x equal to 0. There's a vertical asymptote there, right? So the y-axis is actually an asymptote in this case, okay? So this is pretty much all the information that you can extract without doing calculus or anything like that. So at this point, let's see what the graph looks like. Let's draw, let's draw some axes. Let's draw some asymptotes. So we have, so here is say one, All right? So at one half, we've got that horizontal asymptote, okay? The y-axis doubles as a vertical asymptote, so does x equals 2. So x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote. I know I have intercepts at 1 and at minus 1. Okay? So I have all that information. So the other thing I probably want to do is I probably want to look at the sine diagram. Okay, so we'll draw our number line. We're going to mark off intercepts at minus 1 and at plus 1, asymptotes at 0 and at 2. Um, once, you, once you've done enough of these, you start getting the hang of the fact that if, if none of the factors are even powers, then you're going to get a sign change at every single one of these points that you've marked off. So you really only have to test kind of out past 2, try say x equals 3, you see, okay, everything is positive. So we expect that we're going to get something that looks like that, okay? So this is useful because it tells me what's going on at the two vertical asymptotes. It tells me that I've got to head down to minus infinity, on the left of zero, up to plus infinity on the right, and same sort of thing at two, okay? I know I've got that going on. 
The, the one thing that I don't quite get from the sign diagram, and I may not be able to determine exactly, um, is am I going to approach this horizontal asymptote from above or from below on either side? That's, that, that's a little bit trickier to work out. But we have this bit of information here. So what we know is that we have to kind of head down to that vertical asymptote there. We have to pass through one. We have to head up there. So it seems like the most likely scenario is going to be something like that, right? Okay. Probably looks like that in between. There, there's some possibility, well, not really, I think, you know, that it could kind of go down and then back up, but, I mean, we need to look at the, the derivative to rule that out, but chances are it looks something like that, okay? Um, now, here, I'm just coming down. Now, I know I don't cross the x-axis again because there is another intercept, so most likely I'm going to come down and just approach that horizontal asymptote. Again, there's some small possibility that I dip down just below the horizontal asymptote and come back up. Um, calculus would tell me whether or not that would happen, because if that happened, there would have to be a minimum value. I would find that using calculus. Um, notice, by the way, you are allowed to cross horizontal asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes you can't cross because those x values are not in your domain, there's nothing stopping you from going across a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so the last one is minus 1. So now the, the only thing here is I know I've got to come up, I've got to pass through that intercept. And now the question is, do I go up, come down, and go like that? Or do I come up and just kind of Go like that, right? I don't know which of those two possibilities it is. Again, that's where calculus would come into the picture. Taking the derivative would tell me that. Which one of those two is it going to be? I don't know yet, right? We won't know until we, we move on. We do a bit of calculus. So we learn how to deal with that. But again, a lot of the shape you can, you can work out, right? You can get some idea of the shape just by, by looking at the function by factoring, looking at the sine diagram, looking for asymptotes, intercepts, you can get a pretty rough idea of the graph. In fact, if I, if I really wanted to figure out what was happening here, I could probably just try, you know, a couple of large x values and see is the y value bigger or smaller than one half when x is really big, right? Um, that's one way that I could do it. If I find that things are a little bit less than one half, Chances are it's the yellow curve. If I find that things are a little bit bigger than one half, uh, chances are it's the pink curve, right? So I could, I could figure that out if I had to.